Welcome everyone back to Lowlands Wargaming. My name is Kevin. Uh, th uh, this week's video is going to be a bit of a shorter one. We're going to dip, deep dive into uh, this army of uh, Earl the Young allied with Minas Tirith. Um, it was featured in last week's battle report. If you haven't seen that battle report yet um, and you don't want spoilers, you should probably stop watching this video and watch that one first because I will be referencing moments in that uh, battle as a showcase of uh, this list's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the army and uh, uh, why I think it's quite decent. It's not maybe the most competitive army out there, but it's quite good. So um, let's talk about the army. Um, the most logical place to start is of course Earl de Young himself. He's the reason why you would play this list. Earl de Young is a very interesting hero. Um, uh, he's got like three attacks, three runes, five, five. Three might. He's got a special rule where the first might he spends on a turn on a four plus he gets it back, um, and he's got a twelve inch horse. Uh, um, so fair enough. Like it's like lots of little things. Quite a good hero. But what makes him especially interesting is that uh, the sons of Earl have a special rule. Say that if they're within six inches of him, that they get an extra attack, which is incredibly powerful. Two attacks base, three on the charge on cavalry, strength four base. Uh, going up to strength 5, they charge strength to the army bonus. If they piercing strike, they can go up to strength 6, so they hit as hard or even harder than cave trolls uh, against uh, enemy infantry if they win the, the combat. So incredibly spicy uh, unit. But Earl comes with a pretty big downside, and that is that he cannot ally with anyone. He cannot take any named heroes and the, with him, and the only exception is that he can ally with Minister If. But if he allies with Minister If, uh, that list can also not contain any named heroes. So you could still ally, and then you can make the historical list of the founding of Rohan, where Earl the Young rides to the aid of the steward of Gondor, the Battle of the Celebrant Fields, uh, and drives off the orc, uh, orcs and I think the, the Condé Shirn Iselings uh, forces, uh, and basically saves uh, Gondor, and in return the steward gives him the lands that would later become Rohan. Um, I think it's the best option you have if you want to play Earl, especially at higher points levels, you have to ally in Ministry. And uh, I think at 500 points and above, Ministry actually has more points in your force than uh, Earl the Young, so you could even say that it's a Ministry force just with a different take on it, which is also why I mentioned it in uh, our Ministry of Deep Dive video, because it really is a Ministry of List, just different, with really good shock cavalry contingent allied into it and weaker heroes. So how do you build a Earl the Young list? Well, the first thing you have to do, in my opinion, is take a King of Men as an ally, um, if you're above 400 points. And then the King of Men should be your leader, so that Earl the Young is not your leader and he's free to do things and risk himself and, uh, you know, charge into places with his sons. That's the first uh, uh, trick I would do. Um, and then the Ministry of List portion has two jobs, or three actually. First, uh, numbers. The Sons of Earl are really expensive, and if you would just spam them, then you're going to run out of uh, <laughs> points really quick and with a very low body count. Uh, the second is just holding the line. So, you know, there's still a really good shield wall. You can put them on an objective and hold that space. Um, and the third is shooting. Um, and you want to have enough shooting that unless the enemy uh, army focuses really heavily on shooting, that you have enough to force them to come towards you, and you can dictate where you play on the field, and then you can do a standard hammer and anvil tactic where you have a nice shield wall, and then once they come towards you, uh, the lines clash. Earl and his sons come in from the side, or maybe through the middle if you left a gap or something, and uh, you kind of uh, wreck it that way. Now, after you've got this contingent in, if you have points left, so, you know, 600 and above, you need to start looking at what your other warbands are going to be, and then you can either add captains, more kings of men, or knights of the white tower. These are basically your options in addition to siege. Now, this is a 650 points list, and the points kind of work out that the best option there is to add a knight of the white tower of a full warband. It gives you a really nice amount of numbers, some nice amount of shooting with the rangers, um, and you have enough points so you can also take some fountain court guard for a nice bodyguard. So the list really has a little bit of everything. It has some bodyguard, it has some shooting, decent fight and fight four everywhere with the rangers of spear supports. And it's got two strikers and a knight of the white tower and Earl the young. And it's got a, a leader um, that's very defensive, can also hit if it needs to for like contests of champions or things like that. 
but you won't lose too much by just high uniting of men and making sure bodyguard stays up and deny the opponent leader victory points. Now on lower points, like 500, I would just take these two warbands and make this warband a little bit more elite, so maybe, maybe more fountain court guard. Um, at 550, maybe you would throw in a bolt thrower or the Knight of the White Tower, but just have smaller warbands. Um, 600, probably like this, less numbers, something like that. 650, I would cons uh, is this list. And 700 and above, I would strongly consider taking a bolt thrower or maybe a trebuchet, depending on what you prefer. Um, I ran this list at 750 points in the recent Dutch league. Um, I ended up winning the, the entire Dutch league, but with this particular list, I finished third on that day. Um, so not the best result, but still pretty decent. And I think that um, pretty much sums up this uh, army. It's a very solid list and very fun to charge into things with, with Sansa Earl. But I don't think it's necessarily the most competitive list, uh, not even the most competitive ministry list. But it will absolutely catch people off guard because the Sons and Earl, they're really powerful. Um, and people can often underestimate what they do or they can overestimate what they do. They'll, they become so scared of them that they move themselves into awkward positions to try and avoid the cavalry charge. And then you end up winning the game because you can move on to objectives or things like that. Now, there are a few nuances in this list that I would like to, to discuss, and then we'll go over some practical examples from the battle report of last week. Um, first off, I, I really like taking a single syllable guard with longbow on a horse. I discussed this last week, or not last week, uh, in the last uh, in-depth video of Minister Riff. Um, it's got bodyguard, um, so it's not going to run away as long as your king is alive. Uh, longbow is nice for shooting. It's a really good objective grabber. And you saw this in uh, the battle report video. Um, my cavalry managed to move up uh, to in the seize the prize uh, and screen off, and the Citadel Guard was the one that dismounted and grabbed the objective because he's not needed as necessarily as cavalry. He's the perfect candidate to just dismount and, and you know hand it off to his son who can then ride off of it. And uh, I would have much rather keep my sons on the horse because they're a much more potent warrior. Um, but if it was a different scenario. And there was maybe a side objective that I needed one warrior to. Of course, I could send a Fountain Court guard. They would take a run forever as well with, you know, bodyguard. But a Sildo guard on a horse can still contribute to the fight with a longbow and maybe ride off somewhere if needed. And it's just a very flexible unit to have and very nice to have in the, in the arm. So as you saw in, in uh, the battle report, um, this army is quite decent at just fighting shield wall to shield wall. It's got some... Uh, really good and durable units. The rangers are quite fragile, so you need to try and protect them for as long as you can. But you do have 5-4 everywhere, which usually gives you the edge against most evil armies. So especially in a good versus evil tournament, this is an interesting pick, I, I think. Um, and Earl himself should not be underestimated. Um, like I fought against Azok, um, and that's not a good matchup for him. Like you shouldn't try to kill Azok with a hero if you can avoid it. But there was a situation where I was like, was really close to the main objective. Um, and I figured I'd risk it. And I had to buy time, right? I had to stall. And I did get a charge off. So the worst thing he could do was three wounds on Earl. And he does have two fates. Um, so I would probably survive that. I still have might left. So maybe I would survive with one wound remaining. Or I'd lose my horse or something like that. That's acceptable because it would buy me time to get the relic out of there and ultimately that would win me the game. And I can do stuff like that without even giving up victory points because the King of Men is the leader and Earl is just free to do things like that, even if it's just a kamikaze run. Ideally, you don't want to lose him, especially not early because then the sons also become a lot less scary. Um, but if you have to, it might be the right play there. So I, I, ideally, you, you don't sacrifice Earl, especially not early because uh, if you do, the sons are a lot less scary. They don't... You know, they don't have their two attacks, three on the charge, they're just weaker. But if you have to, if it's important to winning the game, absolutely just sacrifice and throw it in there. And, you know, it really paid off because I struck up to the 510 and, you know, Tim only managed to get the 5-9. I was really lucky there. But in all the rights, Azor probably would have won that combat. Um, but at least he wouldn't have been able to hero combat and go into the relic, which is ultimately what I was trying to do there. And it worked. And it worked even better than planned, than anticipated. But, you know, the goal was just there to buy the time for the relic to get out of there. So with the king, on the other hand, you want to be as careful as possible. Like in the battle report, you saw that I moved it away. 
but I also wasn't afraid to charge in when it was necessary because it was just goblins, like, they're not that scary. Like, of course, a fluke can happen. He could lose his horse or maybe even take a wound and give up victory points. Um, but the threat there was that the goblins would wrap around my force, um, charge me in the back, get traps off, and I would start losing units. Um, maybe even breaking me, and breaking is actually worth a lot of victory points in this scenario, so I wanted to stop that from happening, which is why the king charged in and helped out there and just bought the warriors some time to, to regroup. So ultimately, I think this is a very uh, fun list to play. The hitting power of the sun is just very fun to use. Um, if you like playing with Ministry with the basic tools that you have with the army, as I mentioned in that video, this might be a list that's worth trying. Um, because really, the Sons of Earl are just better Knights of Ministry, more expensive, sure. Um, so in order to get those, you have to give up your name to Heroes of Ministry, so that's kind of the, the trade-off that you have. Uh, but other than that, it plays very much the same. The same strengths, um, even more strengths in the, <laughs> in the uh, case of the Sons of Earl, and the same weaknesses. Like, you don't have tricks, you don't have magic, you don't have, um, you know, tools to move the enemy around, you don't have flying, things like that. So you have the same basic tools that you would have normally in a Ministry of List. It's just a little bit different and plays a little bit differently. And uh, yeah, uh, personally, I really like playing the list. It's different. You don't see it on the on the table uh, a lot. I do decently well with it, um, but it's probably not the most competitive choice, but it's good enough to, you know, do well on competitive levels. I've gotten a few third place finishes with it on tournaments. Um, so it's no, it's pretty decent. Didn't win anything with it, but third place is still a pretty good in my opinion. So that's it for this week. I, I do hope you like these kind of uh, quick in-depth videos about armies. It's something new that we're trying, so please let us know in the comments if you appreciate it. Uh, maybe we'll do it more often, where first we film a battle report with an army, and then in the following video we discuss that army in depth and use a few examples from the, the week before as a showcase. So yeah, let us know. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. And hopefully uh, your dice will not betray you like the Keeper of Secrets was betrayed by his dice. See you next time.